Good morning, folks. A lot of good links today. This one to help visualize the Moore, Oklahoma tornado. These are known as elevation scans taken by the dual polarization radar. This is a terrific article about planetary formation from disks of dust separated in a vortex. If not for the polar perspective of this artist's impression, I might not immediately guess it's driven electromagnetically. Folks, we reported that the GOES-13 went down. It's now back in minimal form, but the official story is that micrometeoroids dinged the satellite. Just a reminder that NOAA was warning of satellite damage at the same time due to powerful proton flux radiation storms ignited by a splendid eruption on the northwestern limb. But I'm sure that's just a coincidence. Great Barrier Reef is in danger. Most of us knew that already, but this detailed article is complemented with a link to UNESCO's World Heritage Map. It's a pretty cool website to poke around and to find out how climate extremes could affect relics of history. NASA has put together about 40 years of images, capping with the newly launched Landsat 8 from back in February. Full video is linked and shows the progression of technology. Speaking of launches, China set to do one of their own. I actually just watched this on live TV, saw no obvious problems. Coming to quakes, I'm zoomed in here so I can turn on the plate boundaries and reveal the significance of this quake. The East Pacific Fault often signifies upticks coming over the next week to 10 days, but most peculiar is how the eastern half of the Ring of Fire outdid the western half over the last 24 hours. Really doesn't happen very often. A solar wind telemetry showing density in orange coming down from yesterday. Even with speed climbing a bit above normal towards the end, it is a minor ramp and the density drop is more significant, setting peace to the magnetometers, indicating strong blocking of plasma by our shield. Inductions came off the baseline to higher frequencies than fading, while the KP index has been falling since we last spoke, and even the electrons are slowly coming back down to reality after two weeks of storms. Hopping right into another dream, however, as solar maximum looks like a morgue. There is no flaring of any sort at the moment, the only remaining sunspots are in major decay and turning out of sight, perhaps cresting the limb and our magnetic connection will juice him back to life. Connections holding the northern quadrant bisected by the western limb. Umby, you alright? Need a glass of milk or something? No? Okay, while he twists unpredictably, the next coronal opening swings in south, in red. Taking a look at the SDO AIA 211, First, we notice a few plasma filaments on the disk, but then we will speed up through now to see a darker region coming in down south. That was the red coronal opening, and it's a coronal hole. In 171 angstroms, we see more filaments, but these are perfectly positioned to demonstrate why coronal cavities form. Now, you know that these are billions of tons of plasma suspended above the surface by magnetic forces, so what would we expect that powerful force to do to tiny, sparse coronal ions? The curved electromagnetism is clearly evident associated with these protrusions into the upper solar atmosphere. Shots of our star to close, including a hell of a filament dance in 304 angstroms. Eyes open. No fear, it's 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time and that's the news. Be safe, everyone.